Hi, Floss Tube. Well, here we are with video number two. So I'm not just a flash in the pan. <laughs> I am hanging in there, and it is working like I thought it would, just by knowing that there's somewhere I'm going to be documenting my cross stitch. It seems like I am more committed to it. You know, it's a real relationship. You know, I didn't need to go to therapy or couples counseling with me and my cross stitch. And I have had, um, I've done 20 stitches. <laughs> this is the thing is that um, maybe it's because of my age. You know, maybe when you're younger you want to, uh, like I remember when I was younger I would, uh, by younger I mean in my 40s or 50s, uh, I would make a list and want to check it off because um, it was so satisfying. And something happened when I tipped over to my senior citizen discount that I didn't want a list anymore. I didn't want to browbeat myself. And so counting how many stitches I actually have to admit I have no clue how many is that listed on a pattern how many stitches there are in the pattern it seems like double work to me I'm stitching long and I have to count how many I've done no 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 that's that's like extra credit homework or something or in my, my brain, I can't fathom why I would do that. So I actually don't know how many stitches I did. But I have been having fun. <laughs> and so I thought I would just share in this short video. My videos, you know, are going to be chill and short. Uh, I would show you what I accomplished. So this, uh, since we last met, <laughs> it sounds like... Like we're having weekly tea or something, or coffee, or happy hour. But anyway, I finished this Jeanette Douglas design. And I really like this design, and I really like her designs. And I so liked uh, this project. Let me show it to you again. Jeanette Douglas designs. See, I'm getting better at figuring out who actually makes the product that I'm stitching. I signed up uh, on Acorns and Threads in April of 2020. Jeanette Douglas' um, two-day retreat is happening in Portland. And so I am so, I am all in. Because when I went to the shop and actually looked at all of her designs, I love them, and I especially, let me show you again, love this one. And what really is exciting about this is on the way home, this is a, this is a couple of weeks ago, um, because I'm in Portland monthly, uh, usually, I stopped at uh, where you have to turn uh, to go from... Uh, the Portland, Salem, all at Woodburn, all of those areas to get to my place over on the other side of the mountain, you turn at uh, Salem and you're taking Highway 20. We're right at that intersection when you're making that left hand turn is the Crafters Warehouse. Now, um, originally, you know, it's a great place to take a potty break. And, uh, but you can't just go in there. I mean, that, that's kind of rude to go in and use their potty and not spend some money there. I, I don't, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> so I went in and I walked up and down all the aisles. I got so excited. And one of the things I got excited about was this little box. So you see this little box? It was $5.99. Of course, I have to paint it. But the great thing about it is that inside the box, 
So you can see that the box is recessed right here. Inside of each box was this um, canvas, little canvas piece that you paint and you insert in the box. Well, I'm not doing that. I am going to attach my little Jeanette Douglas because this is a gift for someone. But I'm going to attach my little Jeanette Douglas design after I painted the box and it's going to insert in the top. Isn't that cool? That is so awesome. And, and so now I just have to you know, paint this box and decorate it, maybe. I'm really excited about that. And it came with the mounting board. So I was really happy to get that um, Jeanette Douglas design done. And it was, uh, it was a great way to get into, to reignite my cross-stitch life because it was a small, what they call a small, and um, you get done faster. And I don't think there's a thousand stitches in the whole thing. Maybe I could say, I did a thousand stitches. No, 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 I won't do that. Next was uh, in, this is what happened. With all this process of the cross-stitch, I decided I needed to um, somewhat separate my quilting world from my cross-stitch world. Because what I found out I was doing was I mostly cross-stitch downstairs in our little TV room. We have a little TV room. And um, I cross-stitch there because I usually don't cross-stitch during the daytime. I am either out and about or I'm up here in the beehive doing quilty things. And uh, so I decided that I was going to reorganize the cabinetry in the um, TV room because it was just, it was mostly empty because I had Marie Kondoed that room a while ago. And we have this big cabinet uh, that fills one whole wall and it has drawers and cabinetry and stuff. And so I um, decided to take all my cross stitch down there so I'm not constantly running up and down the stairs um, looking for stuff and to get it organized and to reconnect myself to what I actually had. So I separated it out into baskets of charts and in that ba basket of charts, because the charts you know, are so small, they're just a piece of paper or a pattern, I also could fit the little pile of um, cross-stitching fabric that I had. So that kind of went in there along with the little tubes of um, needles. Then in the other basket that went in that cabinetry, I put all the cross-stitch patterns that I had already kitted out. And I never really paid attention to that part. And that is a little bit bigger, but it was... Um, eye-opening by just organizing it that way, I felt um, in control, in control of it. And then I had all of my threads uh, in an antique th uh, sewing box that folded out, and I took that down to the TV room so that I could have all of my threads. And they're organized in there, and what I found out when I was organizing was that in the specialty thread area because I tended to carry my pattern to acorns and threads and say I need the fabric and the thread for this that in fact I had um, some duplicates of the thread and it's spendy so I kind of put it all together when it was the same color and got that kind of all organized. Now the DMC is totally out of control in that box but I I'm okay with that. So I took that down there, and it felt so relaxing. What can I say? It was really relaxing, and I enjoyed uh, being in the TV room. The reason I cross-stitch in the TV room 
is because we don't, um, it's so funny we have a TV room. We don't have cable. We're kind of this, um, uh, maybe this weird couple, because we don't have cable. Um, we got rid of that because we weren't using it. And we watch Netflix. Sometimes we watch Amazon Prime and YouTube. That's what we watch. And G hooks his laptop up by this contraption of wire to the television and um, brings up a show on his laptop and it shows up on the TV. Uh, so that's how we watch TV in the evening. So there is a lot of compromise when it comes to watching. I insist that anything that is scary has to be watched in the first hour of that we sit down. It cannot be in the hour before I go to bed. And um, I got this Jeanette Douglas project done because we were into season three of Stranger Things and that show freaks me out. And so I can sit there and stitch and not look and I'm just hearing the sound which is scary enough but then I can look at him and say what the heck happened you know and I can just keep counting it it actually makes my cross stitch very rhythmic because my tension level is going up as I hear chaos raining on the television so by moving that cross stitch down there it um I can't, I, I can't quite explain it, but having it all in one spot and that it's in a uh, organized by what I have is awesome. And so in the organizing and separating out the kits from just the charts, I found um, <laughs> a few things. <laughs> so then I got all excited. I got all excited about... Um, Halloween because you know you have to stay uh, a step ahead of the Halloween uh, the holiday and I could around here the you can almost feel that fall is on on a cusp around here because we're in the high we're you know we're at the base of mountains um, and so the Halloween I thought you know be really fun right now to start stitching Halloween. And in that pile, I found a project that was pretty darn far. It's a Kit and Bixby haunted wool. So, love Halloween, love the sheep. And here is that pattern. Is that haunted? Haunted wool. That's what I have in my sewing room is haunted wool. And I fell in love with this pattern, I don't know, a long time ago. And when I was organizing, I realized, oh my gosh, look at how far I am. Look at how far I am on this. I could, I, I could get this done before Halloween. So I just love that. The thing I didn't know until last year. And I uh, stitch in hand. I just find it more comfortable. I don't know how I would do that with really big projects, although that blue project is big. But um, I stitch in hand. But I did at one point have, I have all kinds of sizes of hoops. I didn't know you were supposed to take the hoop off every night. I'd leave, this thing had the hoop on it for over a year. You know, but what I've discovered, because I'm a quilter, is this product, Flatter. It's not a starch. It's a organic fabric relaxer. And I bought the Scentless, although they have pineapple, fig, you know, all kinds. But this is the Scentless and it relaxes the fibers and so I sprayed my haunted wool and it has taken out the hoop 
marks. So I'm definitely adding that to my repertoire. Because I got into Halloween, I decided to use this this little stitchy bag for my Halloween projects. Look at that. Look at that little charm hanging up. It's creepy. Beware the owl. I got this. It's bags by Wendy, and I got this at um, Acorns and Threads. It was, yeah, this is going to always hold my Halloween projects. <laughs> so what else? What else? Okay. So while I was organizing last night, I found this free pattern that I had already printed, and it is called Free Chart Happy Halloween Witch's Kitchen, The Primitive Hair. So the primitive hair. I need to have this little... Um, sign in my kitchen uh, for October. It said, Kitchen is the Witch's Lab. Now you have to understand that um, I, I know, I think there's a rule that you're supposed to start at the center of a project and work out. Um, and I, I think that's because you don't want to run out of space, but it seems to me if you started in the center and you had the wrong piece, you'd run out of space. I don't know, because I don't know enough. I just kind of do my own thing like I do in quilting. I start on the edge. I want to start on the edge. And so I, on this particular um, Happy Halloween, Kitchen is the Witch's Lab, I started stitching the outside edge while I was, I found this piece of fabric in the box and so I, I kind of like a framework for my design. So I started that and I know that that's a simple pattern. So that's going to be fun to do. And um, so then I'll have two, two um, Halloween patterns. And conceivably three, because <laughs> I had to get this fat. Of course, I bought the whole kit. Fabric, thread, chestnut. It's 32 count chestnut linen. This made me laugh. And it, that's something that is important to me is that I'm enjoying my life and that I get a good laugh every day. And I could imagine while I'm stitching this that I would be laughing all the time. It's by the Drawn Red. Oh, <laughs> it's going red. What's red? Oh, they have a fancy tea. <laughs> thread. <laughs> it's by the Drawn Thread. Um, and it's called Chillin'. I mean, give me a break. Is that not hysterical? That's hysterical. Halloween has always been one of my favorite holidays. So I really want to, I really want to start this one. And there's a, um, looks like a scissor fob. It's just a, you know, I love that they include these little things and how to make it in a different way than just framing it. So I have to, I have to do that. <laughs> Look at that. I was going, what's a red? I didn't see that giant red thing as a T. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Oh, I forgot to show you. One of my favorite um, projects from... Uh, I think it was, yeah, 2018, was Beth Twist's um, Coffee Quaker. I mean, it was so G. I had to, I had to do it. It hangs in our great room. I couldn't get it down to show you because I'd need a ladder. 
and it just says first I have the coffee and then I do the things because every morning I am like raring to go I I'm like I drove my parents crazy I was that child out of bed that you know immediately needed stimulation and um, so I'm chattering at him and and wanting him to do something and and wanting him to watch this video and look look at this Facebook funny and that kind of thing and and he was like nothing before coffee yeah nothing before coffee so when I saw this um, uh, chart by Beth Twist and it said uh, you know first I do the coffee then I do the things I had to make it and and then at Acorns and Threads they had that chart in a little needle minder and so I had to get that too I had to get that too so that's on my Halloween project. While I was in Portland one weekend, the girls, my cup of girls, which is um, a little book group, uh, it's mostly about the wine than the books. <laughs> it's mostly about the fun than the books. Um, came up to Portland to have a sleepover at the condo and um, we don't all read the same book. Uh, we just eventually we talk about books, but we talk about what we've been reading, and then everyone has their phone out and re uh, makes notes about what books they uh, if they want to read them. Um, so there's no heavy discussions with that book club. It's it's all about having fun with each other. So they came up to the condo, and the condo is like an oversized dorm room or a studio apartment. So there's no real privacy. We're all sleeping. Uh, all around it you know someone's on the couch someone's on their blow up bed someone's on a futon and then there is Robin and I who are sharing the one bed in the place and uh, the thing about it is that uh, Robin and I are early risers and even though we were all nurses and um, but I guess I guess the rest of the girls have adapted mostly to retirement where we still, our brains are functioning early in the morning. Time to get up and get to work. And so we're in bed and um, we're both on our phones, phones or iPad, being real quiet. But then I found something and then I'm like, and then she's like squealing because we are in love. We are in love with this. Of course, we're searching cross stitch. You know, I mean, just on my wish list at one, two, three, which I I never filled because God forbid I actually order one hundred and seventy five dollars worth of stuff. Thank God there's my friend Lori told me just put it on your wish list. You know, then you don't you get the thrill for the moment, but you don't actually have to press pay. We found, as we were giggling in the early morning hours, we found this site, the Snowflower Diaries. Have any of you heard of this? This woman is, uh, she's an attorney, but really she's a, a full-time artist of all things art. Photography, painting, cross-stitching. Uh, how she has time, I don't know. She's in Europe, Eastern Europe, and um, I think that's where she is. But it's called the Snowflower Diaries. And I put her blog link on the side of my Wooly blog for you to um, be able to check it out. And she had a whole bunch of free charts. And she has an Etsy shop, but uh, she's adorable. I mean, her charts are adorable. And so I have uh, downloaded and printed the free charts, because Rob and I both have to figure out how we do them all. But look at that. That's January. She did a full month. And maybe this is old news to you, but, um, but for me, I was like, holy moly. I mean, July. July totally cracks me up. Flamingos. 
So, um, this, oh, oh, September. Look at September. I did something wrong with October, but, um, so I have to reprint that one. But I loved October because, um, <laughs> it was a hedgehog. Look at that. Hedgehog. In November. Oh, it's like three of them I printed sideways, huh? Okay. November. And December. So her site is amazing. And, um... I just love, oh, and here's a couple other free uh, patterns that I've downloaded from her. Just whisper my name in your heart and I will be there. Yeah. Very sweet. Very sweet lady in her patterns. Well, that's it. It was supposed to be a real short one. I hope it's short enough. And I will be busy putting in my 21 stitches this week and hopefully be able to share something new with you in an upcoming video. In the meantime, have fun stitching. Always look on the bright side. It's a good life.